Okay, folks. So since it is the uh, 300th episode of the Humanist Report podcast, and I didn't really do anything for like the main show because there was just so much to talk about, I decided to do the celebration on Twitch. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is cringing together. I'm going to watch the uh, first episode of the Humanist Report podcast. Not all of it because it's pretty long. Um, I got the idea from Kyle because Kyle reacted to his first video. I know that Hunter Avalon oftentimes will react to his older content. So I thought it would be fun to kind of like just blatantly copy what they're doing and react to my old content as well. Because what else do you do to celebrate like 300 episodes other than watch old stuff? Now, I haven't been uh, here for a very long time, like this part of my catalog. So this is like the first video that I ever uploaded five things you need to know about Jeb Bush. And for some reason it has like 2.6 K views, which is a lot. But I think that what happened is like over time, if channels kind of like grow, then people will go back to the first video and they'll watch it just out of curiosity. Like that's kind of what happened with Kyle. Like for whatever reason, his, his first video was like, getting recommended to a lot of people. It got recommended to me as well. Um, so, you, you know, maybe that's what it is. But the rest of them, they did okay. You know, um, some of these are pretty low, like 266 views. But I mean, not bad for the first week, right? Like 900 views, 600 views, not too bad. So, um, yeah, I don't know if we should just watch like the full episode or the Jeb Bush video. I think... Uh, It'll probably be early in the episode, but this is episode number one. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance. The audio quality is horrible and it'll be so it, this is going to be uncomfortable for me to watch because like seeing myself is awkward, but I, we'll, I'll just shut up and we'll watch. Welcome to the Humanist Report. I'm Mike Figueredo. Oh my God. <laughs> Already, I can't gonna be this is gonna be awful oh my god now just a little bit of background uh so right to the side over here um across from me we had a giant bearded dragon cage and i forgot to take the extra cage with crickets out of the room so you can hear them chirping the entire time and on top of that this microphone that i'm speaking into here um even though it was connected to my laptop, it was recording my laptop audio because I didn't select my microphone when I was recording to Audacity. So this episode, like, it's it's bad when it comes to the audio. But nonetheless, um, I'll, I'll shut up and let myself talk. This is our very first episode, and I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here. I want to thank any of you that's watching, all two of you. Uh... But hopefully we'll build up our viewer base over the next couple of months. Um, this is going to be a political... Okay, I'm noticing something a little bit strange. I'm like, my eyebrows are twitching a lot. Now, it is true that I have Tourette's syndrome, but I don't have like an eyebrow twitch or anything like that. I think it was just nerves. I was super, super nervous right here. Um, and by the way, this is my gaming PC. This was a pre-build. Now it's like a full, like I took all the parts out. Or I should say my husband took all the parts out and built a proper PC. But um, I just like had the dual screen, bought this with my uh, Blockbuster money. And yeah, I thought it looked like a kind of a cool set. Uh, I, I, you know, I made do with what I had, which was not a lot at the time. Local podcast where I discuss weekly news stories, namely ones in political nature. But I'm also going to cover scientific topics as well as other types of current events that are pretty important to American news. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump. Your voice sounds like a young teenager as well. Yeah, yeah. I think that the, the difference in the microphones, it really it does make you sound almost different. Like depending on the gain of the microphone, it almost changes like the pitch even. Um and also, I, I think I was, like, super nervous here, too. Why do you look so happy uh, those days? Yeah, that's a good question. It's because this was before my soul was corrupted, right? This was before my brain started melting out of my ears from covering politics every single day for six years. You can't see it now because I have these headphones on, these comically large, bright green headphones, but... 
now my soul has been corrupted and um yeah <laughs> so that's why i had that little glimmer of hope in my eyes i was still technically a, a libtard here right a libtard cuck i was a sock dem i was just like a progressive democrat um i wasn't necessarily like team blue no matter who but like i was um i was different back then i, I feel like i've definitely shifted to the left over the years but i was more of like a, a lib back then right in because uh, I'm really excited here. So we're going to get to the first story. We've got a bunch of great stories for you. We're going to discuss Hillary Clinton and her opinion on the TPP. We're going to discuss uh, Donald Trump as well as Jeb Bush's presidential campaigns. It's going to be really, really interesting. So I advise you to stick around. If you like political dynasties, I've got great news for you. Take a look. Okay, so this is the Thank Jeb one. Thank you very much. You know, I always feel welcome at Miami-Dade College. This was like the start of 2016 when we all had to take Jeb Bush seriously. I I thought it was going to be like Jeb Bush against Hillary Clinton. This was, uh, I believe, the week or the week after Donald Trump announced his presidency. And I did not think he had a chance at all. I know I look so young without the beard. Um I look super young without a beard. I think I've, I've probably aged like in my face as well if I really compare contrast. I mean, you guys can. It's kind of hard for me to see like my, my upper screen here, but yeah. For him, the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment wholeheartedly disagrees with him. Now, Wait, what one am I thing talking that's interesting about? is that about Jeb Bush. First and foremost, he's pro-discrimination. Now, I love this effect. Oh, you can't see it. I, I, gotta, I gotta go back so you can see it again. It's a beautiful little like um, default text. Discrimination. Now, Look at that. he says that the Constitution grants no right to same sex marriage and he's in favor of, quote, traditional marriage. Unfortunately for him, the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment wholeheartedly disagrees with him. Now, one thing that's interesting is that this also means that he's against his own marriage because if you're for traditional marriage, well, if we're looking at it from a biblical perspective, then that means that interracial marriages are also probably against the Bible. Jeb Bush is... Okay, I can't with the fucking crickets. <laughs> my my talking and mannerisms is so different. I'm sorry, I need to talk into the microphone. I talk so different. A part of it is I was like incredibly nervous as well. Very nervous. I had no public speaking experience. Um... This it, this is weird. Like this is causing me to almost like disassociate. This is so strange to watch. In an interracial marriage, it wasn't until 1968 that the Supreme Court said in Loving v. Virginia that couples of different races could marry. Jeb Bush's wife is Mexican, so it's really interesting that he's taking the stance of traditional marriage. It's very hypocritical, I think. And he needs to acknowledge the fact that his marriage is not necessarily seen as traditional. It's still fairly Why you I feel like I talk so do I I don't need like I feel like the way that I that I speak now is like entirely different than this. The the fucking crickets are driving me nuts like it's almost unbearable listening to it. I'm not going to lie. Um it's it's insufferable. It's like torturous to listen to. It's fucking driving me nuts. I'm trying to like listen to what I'm saying and critique myself, but the crickets in the background is like making me want to fucking jump off a cliff in Roblox, of course, but it's just, ooh, goddamn. Really ...controversial in certain parts of the country, namely the South. This is very cringe. Going further, when it comes to the issue of whether or not businesses should be able to discriminate against gay people, he says that they should if it's based off of religious belief. I sound like a liberal academic, this is a I really agree. dangerous, slippery slope. See, conservatives always talk about the slippery slope with marriage equality. However, this is a real slippery slope. If I say that it's my religious belief to discriminate against African Americans, so I think for the most part, like the arguments that I'm making are okay, pretty standard against like evangelicals, which were at the time the dominant strain in the Republican Party. Um, you know, I think that this this still all holds up. It's very listening to me speak, like watching this, is making me like want to jump out of my own skin it's it's even watching like something today is a little bit difficult for me but watching myself like five years ago i don't know what it is it's making me so uncomfortable and the crickets on top of it i can't like the fucking crickets holy shit the fact that like i didn't recognize that i didn't take them out and didn't hear them shows you how like desensitized i was to the sound of it because we had our bearded dragon for a while um 
Huh, fuck, that's hard to listen to. Let me let me skip ahead. I want to go to... Okay, I want to see what I said about Donald Trump because that's actually relevant. He became president. Um, so yeah, this is me showcasing his uh, first announcement when he called Mexicans rapists. Um, I'm curious as to what I said and how much I downplayed Donald Trump. Donald Trump. So first and foremost, he says, quote, I'm really rich. Is this a qualification? I mean, does this make you a good leader just because you have money? If so, then I don't know how. Please explain. Um, another thing that he says is that he's not going to be taking money from big donors. So what's great is... Okay, I notice a little bit like skipping ahead, even just a few minutes, I look a little bit more comfortable. It's always like that initial nerves that makes you feel so awkward. But once you keep talking, you kind of warm up and become a little bit more, um, you know, confident. ...is that he's not going to be influenced by the 1%. The problem is that he is the 1%. He is a billionaire. He has about $9 billion. As he said, he's really rich. So it doesn't matter that he's not going to take money from lobbyists. He's going to bankroll his own campaign and do just as bad for the country as if he was taking money from lobbyists who want to uh, agree destroy with environmental regulations, who want to destroy workers' regulations and whatnot. So true, true. It's interesting that he talks about how there's an influence of. I feel like I'm making solid points. I mean, none of this is like revolutionary. Um, but I mean, I was back at the time. I lived and and breathed all this shit, so I knew everything about, uh, you know, Donald Trump, Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton. So I knew exactly what I wanted to say. And at this point, I would like talk nonstop to my husband about politics. So this is why I needed to start a podcast. So that way I would have like some outlet and not like bug him with this stuff. Not that he didn't like to talk about it as well, but I was like obsessive. So I feel like the points that I'm making are actually, they're pretty solid. Money in politics, but yet at the same time, ironically, he's running saying that he's gonna bankroll his own campaign. That's pretty ironic. Now, one thing that I think is Embarrassed. It's pretty ironic. My talking is totally different. Do you notice that? I talk different now than I did then. And I don't know if that's natural for people to like change the way that they talk. Because when I watched Kyle Kalinske's first video, he talks like a little bit different when he was younger. But by and large, he kind of sounds the same. Like he was critical of himself and he said that he like sounded like he was trying to make his voice deeper than it really was. Uh, but for me... I think that the the difference, like the juxtaposition between now and then is much like the contrast is a lot wider. You know, I don't know. I don't know. It's it, it's it's just weird. We're all our own biggest critic, but like it's it feels so different. Like the way that I talk here is is very strange to me. Interesting and interesting too is that he actually paid people to cheer. Because, I mean, when I first saw the That's video... That's actually true. I thought it was interesting how many people were sitting there cheering for him. I mean, really loud cheers, but it all makes sense when you read an email that he put out. It says, We are looking to cast people for the event to wear t-shirts and carry signs and help cheer him in support of his announcement. We understand this is not a traditional background job, but we believe acting comes in all forms, and this is inclusive of that school of thought. Yeah, Kyle's, uh, Kyle's old videos does look uh, pretty hostage -y. They kind of still do, to be to be honest. Uh, we were meaning about that not too long ago, but um, it, it is it, it was uh, very dark in his old videos. I feel like I had the lighting down pretty well, like visually it was okay. Uh, the audio, however, is just atrocious. Um, it makes me want to like lay down in the middle of the road and get run over by a, a fucking semi in Terraria or, or Roblox or Minecraft. They don't have cars in Terraria. Now, what was the price that they were paid? $50 per person. That is shameful. That's really shameful. When it comes to the question of would I do that for $50? Okay, I don't remember what I said. Um, back then, like during this time, I probably would have done it for $50 because I didn't think that Trump had a chance and um, I needed the money because I spent like all of the money that I had on a camera to start the podcast and so I was like I was struggling so I would have done it probably I don't know if I, I said this back then but like now thinking if I were in this place probably 
I would hold the sign up. Now, knowing what I know, knowing that he actually became president and was a legitimate threat, no, I wouldn't have done this. But let's see what old Mike says. Yes. Or young Mike. Sure. Oh, okay. So I agree with <laughs> That's myself. That's embarrassing to admit, but I mean, if, if Donald Trump wanted to pay me 50 bucks to put on a shirt and cheer, I would be as ridiculous as possible. I would be screaming at the top of my lungs because I think it's hilarious. Now, do we actually have to worry about Donald Trump winning? Okay, this is going to get interesting. Um, well, I, I'm pretty sure I like downplay it, and I think, no, there's no way. Because, I mean, I, at this point in time, again, there was like this glimmer of hope in my eyes. I was a young lib cuck, and I thought there's no way that America is – that stupid to you know elect a carnival barker like donald trump like this was before he even jumped to the front of the poll so this was right when he uh announced um let's see what i say i'm pretty sure i was like no nah, there, there's no chance that he's gonna win we don't we don't because for one well that's embarrassing this is worse than the the little scandal that broke out with Rand paul using stock photos on his website but i'm gonna read you a couple of tweets that, that indicate why he's gonna end up just dismissing himself from the election inadvertently. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. You have no idea. You have no idea what's in store, young man. You have no idea that the dumb fuckery of Donald Trump is what ultimately, arguably, catapulted him to the presidency. You have no idea. If I could go back in time and tell myself right here, He's going to be the president. I would literally shit my pants. Like the stool that I'm sitting on would be filled with feces. I would shit myself. Literally. So one of his tweets is, quote, Sorry, losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest. And you all know it. Please don't feel stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. I just have to say that anyone who ever references their IQ unironically usually has a low IQ. I'm just going to put that out there. They're usually stupid. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. Okay. Um, For something like that, honestly, like I can I can I can give myself a pass. I mean, how kind of me, right? Because when you see a tweet like that, it's like this is very clearly an unserious person. There's no way this person is going to be the president one day. Oh, Michael. Mike, Mike, Mike. So young, so naive, young man. Merciful of you. Another tweet from Donald Trump. Money was never a big motivation for me, except as a way to keep score. The real excitement is playing the game. I don't know what that means. I really don't know what that means. So if you do, comment below and tell me because I don't get it. Maybe it's because I have such a low IQ and Donald Trump has such a high IQ that when he communicates these tweets, it just goes right over my head. I don't know. Now, another tweet. I'm so fucking nervous. I, I like I think I've gotten a little bit better, but you can tell I'm still very nervous here. And I was like, I remember being nervous. I remember like the butterflies in my stomach because like this was it felt weird, like talking to a camera, it, effectively talking to myself. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's very cringeworthy to me. It's hard to watch this. My Twitter has become so powerful that I can actually make my enemies tell the truth. <laughs> No, when when you read that, you think that he's going to say, I can make my enemies disappear. But it's just, I can make my enemies tell the truth. Well, okay. Again, I don't really know what that means. No examples, no nothing. I feel like the tweets that I'm bringing up, you know, with the exception of the first one, all of these tweets are completely insignificant and irrelevant. And I probably would, like, nowadays, I, I would, like, cut that out because don't drone on. Well, actually, I haven't really improved when it comes to droning on. So never mind. Nothing has changed. Uh, moving on. This one's a good one. The concept of global warming was created by... <laughs> Sorry. The concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non-competitive. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what any of this means. Again, it's probably just going right over my head because I'm stupid and he's smart. He adds to global warming. I'm going to say something that probably I shouldn't say because I don't want to put this out there because other people then say it. I have a punch face. I literally have a punch face. Like, how could you not want to punch me in the face? The beard helped to a degree, but I, I still kind of do. Um, I think I just, I have an ugly smile. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like dunking on myself. <laughs> I'm fucking myself up. In another tweet, this very expensive global warming bullshit has got to stop. Our planet is freezing. 
record low temperatures and our global warming scientists are stuck in ice. Whoa! You, you don't read the news at all, do you? This is, or 2014 was the hottest recorded year ever. Now, when it comes to 2015, the first couple of months were already the hottest in recorded history. We're breaking records, Donald Trump. You're not paying attention. So maybe you're super smart, but you got to pay attention, buddy. That's part of the, uh, that comes with being intellectual. Oh, no. So another one, he says, I am being proven right about. <laughs> Did she... I tried to give her a kiss and she like recoiled and then her foot got tangled up in, um, my headphone cord and now she's really mad at me. I'm so sorry. So another one, he says, I am being proven right about massive vaccinations. The doctors lied, save our children and their future. Ooh. Okay, well, you yeah, yeah. See, this is part of what fueled my naivete about Donald Trump because I thought there's no way this like anti-intellectual dingbat who's explicitly anti-vax would ever get elected to the, to the presidency. Um, unfortunately for me, he did get elected and um, he ended up overseeing the worst pandemic in a hundred years. Oof, oof. You can save your children if you vaccinate them. You're exposing them to measles if you don't and other types of viruses. So that's just stupid. I don't even... You know what I think the difference is in my speaking is that I enunciate a little bit more nowadays. Because after... Like the whole point of me initially really starting this is because I wanted to get public speaking experience. And so I kind of like self-critiqued and look at, looked at this and thought, I'm not really enunciating enough. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. It, it's hard to like... I can't be objective about myself because everything is skewed you know so it's um i don't know i don't know what it is but my speaking is so different i can't even laugh about that one that's just dumb now true young my Mike. favorite one of true. all is this one <laughs> amazing how the haters and losers keep tweeting the name <laughs> fuckface von clownstick <laughs> like they are so original and like no one else is doing it <laughs> If you guys don't know, this is a name that Jon Stewart gave to Donald Trump. So the fact that it really caught on, it just, it warms my heart. I think it's hilarious. And the fact that he acknowledged it is awesome. It's really awesome. Now, the final tweet, as everybody knows, quote, but the haters and the losers refuse to acknowledge, I do not wear a wig. My hair may be perfect, maybe, uh, may not be perfect, excuse me, but it's mine. Donald, I don't think anybody's saying that you wear a wig. We know what you're doing. You're growing out like a flap in the back, and then you're flipping it over your head. It doesn't look like a wig. It would probably look like a mullet if you combed it all backwards. We know that's not a wig. I don't know who's saying it's a wig, but it's very clear that you're doing an epic comb over. But I don't care about that. That's at a hominid. It sounds like I have peanut butter on the roof of my mouth. Like, that's the way. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it, I think at the time, like I was very like, I wasn't sure how it would come across. So I didn't want to like swallow the saliva that was in my mouth. At least that's what it sounds like. I don't know. It's, it's so weird to look back and like criticize this. Although it is making me feel very old because I do look a lot younger here than I do now. Like I'm an old fuck now. And I was very young back then, a young little whip whippersnapper. Now I'm this old fuck. Who's like, um, whose soul has been rotted by <laughs> politics. <laughs> And what we should attack him for is the substance of his policy positions. But the fact of the matter is that he doesn't really have any. He doesn't know about politics. True. He's got money. He's True. bored. So he's doing this to get attention. So I think we should have some more fun. I want to know what your Donald Trump campaign slogan is. This was trending on Twitter a couple of days ago. And I want to kind of keep this going because I think it's hilarious. I love it. I love uh, the fact that know he's what? running. This was when I joined Twitter as well. Worst mistake I've ever made. So even though like this video has more views now... This uh, was the first video that actually got a lot of attention. It got like 300 views in the first couple of days, and I thought that was really awesome. So um, let me see. Bernie Sanders is catching up to Hillary Clinton. Uh, immediately when Bernie Sanders announced, I was like, I was on it. I was very excited. A new poll shows that Bernie Sanders is catching up with Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. So according to the Morning Consult, Bernie trails just 12 points be behind Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire, and this is a very, very important primary state. So currently, she's sitting at 44 points, whereas Bernie Sanders is sitting at 32. Now, of course, she still has a pretty big lead, but it, this really speaks to the fact that Bernie Sanders is able to galvanize the people. 
because he's a very, very strong public speaker, I think. Some people critique him and says, say that he's not necessarily very charismatic, but I think he is because if you really pay attention to the substance of his policies, well, then it makes sense and it speaks to most voters because Mike, most- Mike, that's not that's not technically what charisma means, though, but I do see what you're saying. Just like I, I think that we should say is he has a message that resonates with people, young Mike, okay? Most of his policy positions are overwhelmingly in favor with the American people. We haven't really had a candidate like that since a really long time. Maybe perhaps candidate Obama. But as we've seen, he's taken a completely different route. Uh, the reason why I think this is occurring is because with Hillary Clinton, we get these... I think wall- that if I like were calm and not like super tense, if I like relaxed my shoulders, it would probably sound similar to me today. I think part of it is just like doing it for so long. You, you don't... Like you're less cognizant of how you come across and you just you just say what's on your mind. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a really tough battle, but I think Bernie Sanders can do it. We just got to get behind him. We got to support uh, him. You can go to berniesanders.com and donate to his campaign. Even five bucks is going to help because this is. Re- I forgot that I uh, clicked out of the full episode, but this is the Bernie Sanders Hillary Clinton clip. OK, maybe I kind of want to watch a little bit of this. I'll watch it on like um, 1.5 speed. New Hampshire. So according to the Morning Consults, Bernie trails just 12 points behind Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire, and this is a very, very important primary state. So currently, she's sitting at 44 points, whereas Bernie Sanders is sitting at 32. Now, of course, she still has a pretty big lead, but this really speaks to the fact that Bernie Sanders is able to galvanize the people, because he's a very, very strong public speaker, I think. Some people critique him and say that he's not necessarily very charismatic, but I think he is, because if you really pay attention to the substance... (laughs) <laughs> Trey, man. Oh, should I just realize the old humanist report on the screen? You were a twink. Twink humanist report 2015. Uh, bear humanist report. And um, old bear humanist report 2021. <laughs> Since of his policies? Well, then it makes sense and it speaks to most voters because most of his policy positions are overwhelmingly in favor with the American people. We haven't really had a candidate like that since Has a really long time. Been. Maybe perhaps candidate Obama, but as we've seen, he's taken a completely different route. Uh, the reason why I think this is occurring is because with Hillary Clinton, we get these watered down, more vanilla proposals. While she thinks that maybe we should allow students to refinance their student loans, while Bernie Stan- Sanders thinks that it should just be free. While Hil- Hillary Clinton thinks maybe we should expand health care. I'm not necessarily saying that's her, her stance. I think she supports Obamacare. While Bernie Sanders thinks we should have universal health care. So if you just really want to go the extra mile and elect a candidate who's really going so to... So back America- then, universal health care didn't have like the negative connotations as it had back then. It usually meant like single payer or a national health system. But now when Democrats say universal health care... That's like a cue for not single payer. Uh, but back then, universal health care, in my opinion, was like that was single payer. It was a synonym for single payer or a national health system. Like even though th- those are like different systems, but it just meant like everyone was covered uh, for the most part. Good people, and that guy is Bernie Sanders. Now, unfortunately, even though he's catching up to Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire, he's still got quite a ways to go in other states. So if we look at Iowa, Hillary is 54 points to Bernie's 12. That's huge. Moving on to South Carolina, it's even a little bit more dismal. Hillary Clinton has 56 points. The Wait, what just happened with the audio there? Holy shit. That's huge. Moving on to South Carolina, it's even a little bit more dismal. Hillary Clinton has 56 points. I don't know what went on there. I wonder if like the audio glitched out on my laptop or something. And so I used the camera audio and like replaced it. I don't know. He's 10 points. So that was weird. make no mistake. He has a lot of work to do, but... The fact that he's able to come from way behind and almost catch up to her in New Hampshire, well, it speaks we'll volumes down. We'll do the drunk, to his populist uh, drunk message. Human support, as uh, Mr. Anderson is suggested. It that Hillary is currently leading just so far. Well, it's name recognition. A lot of people don't even know who Bernie Sanders is. Uh, it does sound drunk. David Pakman and Lewis, they did a video about how one person oh my god, Lewis was still on the David Pakman show back then. No kidding. That Bernie Sanders was actually a Republican, even though this individual indicated that she's very much progressive. So once he gets his message out there, I think that it's really going to take foot. Now, there's also some other reasons why I think that we should not really discount Bernie Sanders. First and foremost, he has grassroots support. If you look at his campaign... Yeah, Void, I, I think you're right. Like, the highs are really high it's very like it sounds like i'm recording in a tin can and again this is because it's coming out of my laptop's audio uh the audio is honestly really really insufferable it's really really bad pain events well thousands of people are showing up more so than some of the other events if you heard about the rick santorum event only two people showed or no it was one person although two other people showed up later and he called it a success 
No, that's not a success. That's a that's an overwhelming epic failure. Now you were still reason- saying epic fail back then. That could have just been uh, that I was like ten years too late again. I feel like people were not saying epic fail back then. I don't know. The reason is that he raised more money than establishment Republicans in the first 24 hours of his campaign. One point. <laughs> Bring back the crickets. <laughs> Five million dollars exactly, which is crazy. That's now, more than... now we have dog snoring. That's that's the uh, substitute dog snoring. Although he he just fell asleep, so he's not snoring yet. But you can you can hear the dog snoring on the on the streams. Marco Rubio, uh, Ren Paul, and Ted Cruz. So this okay, is I don't, guy who... I don't want to listen to my voice anymore. It's driving me nuts. Um, so that is the old humanist report. That's the first episode, the first couple of videos. And yeah, let me see the uh, let me see the comments. Six years ago, I love this video. Excellent, Bernie is the man. I re- responded. Thanks a lot. Hashtag Bernie's army. Bernie Sanders, I. D in USA and Thomas Mulcair, NDP in Canada, would give me a hell of a lot of hope for the first time. I'm normally tepid to somewhat hopeful. Heh, for North America. That was an early poll. The poll that came out two days later showed her at 42 and him at 32, only 10 points down. Really? That's fantastic news. Thanks for the information. I'll be keeping a close eye. Back in these days, um, it's a little bit brutal when you first start out, right? Oh, I should respond to old comments. Should I be like, Fuck you, Peter Johnson. No, that's like this dude is literally like responding on one of the first videos. And to do that like a few years later would be so dickheaded. Uh, it would be funny, though. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't do that, though. But um, when you're first starting out, you see every single comment. And so like if somebody says something shitty to you or criticizes you or makes fun of your appearance, uh, then you're going to you're going to see it. So it's it's a little bit brutal back then. Now. Uh, you, you just don't see these hateful comments. And when you see them, like, I just don't give a shit. Like somebody earlier in the chat jumped in and told me to kill myself and called me a pussy. It literally didn't even phase me. I couldn't care less. So like eventually you just like, you kind of grow really thick skin that you you kind of have to develop. And I think you do naturally over time. But yeah, heart some, oh, I could. Yeah, heart some old comments. You look so different in January, 2020. Okay, okay. I'll heart that one. Bernie 2020. Oh, God, these folks. Uh, This person jumped in like before the 2020 election. I'm going to heart all of these comments. Mike, this is the future here. HRC one. Oh, 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 my God. Okay. Somebody is commenting from the future, but this is the past now, but this is like 2018. Mike, this is the future here. HRC one Iowa by 0.25% and we won New Hampshire by 23%. We caught up. Hindsight is Bernie 2020. Oh my god. This is just making me feel sad. Because like we were all so hopeful. We were all young twinks back then. Like I was, right? And now we're all just like you know, we're weathered. 